how many of us still desire the lyrics of that song? They say, set me on fire. Set me on fire. Set me on fire. And what I realize is that all these weeks we've been going through dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit. And in all essence, what we're trying to do is help guide the Holy Spirit be transformed into the image of Christ. But the truth is that that change will not come until you desire it from the inside. Until you desire it deep within yourself. Until you desire that you no longer want to live that life. You no longer want to walk in the flesh. You no longer want to do those things that sets you back. So this song to me is more than just a song. And I think it's just a way of carrying this whole you know, series of dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit. How much do you desire God to work on you? How much do you desire the transformation in your life? How much do you desire that Christ be reflected in your life? How much do you desire it? And I just want you to reflect even on everything we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks. Is that fire set in you? All through what you have heard in all the teachings that we've had, is that fire lit inside of you? Do you truly desire that purity that God requires? Do you truly desire that meekness? Joy, all the dimensions of the fruit of the spirit to be made manifest in you. It takes you making a firm decision that I want God to dwell in me. And if you are asking for fire, then you should also be able to persevere. In the workers meeting, we're talking about what makes us competent in the assignment God gives to us. And apart from the skills that we have, apart from the knowledge that we have, God also requires purity. What also actually makes you competent in the sight of God is purity. Because it is our reasonable service to present ourselves pure and holy. And if you are asking for that fire to start within you, to begin to flush out every works of the flesh in you, then you must be able to endure the purification process. You must be patient through that process and I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus that indeed people will see Christ in us indeed God will be glorified in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus God bless you choir God will continue to help you God will continue to strengthen you and make you shine like the light that he is in the mighty name of Jesus you may all be seated in the presence of God this morning and just like we've been going through for the past few weeks, we're going to be completing our series this, this morning on the dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit. And today we're going to be looking at patience. Patience, which is the last dimension we're going to be looking at. We've, 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 we've treated eight dimensions already, and we're looking at the last dimension today, which is patience. And I pray that these speakers will have patience on us in the mighty name of Jesus. Our text is from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. Our text all through this series has been from Galatians chapter 5. And it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And it says, Against such, there is no law. All the fruits that we've treated, love, joy, Long suffering, which we are treating today, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance, which we treated last week. And if we ask ourselves, what is the definition of patience? Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay, trouble, or suffering without getting angry or upset. Patience is the capacity to accept or tolerate delay trouble, suffering, without getting angry or upset. And like I said, there has to be a purification process if truly we want to carry the dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit. Because what, if, what, what this whole exercise does is that it replaces every works of the flesh in our lives and replaces them with all these dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit. And, you know, it wasn't planned that patience was going to be the last um, dimension we are going to be looking at. But from everything now, I see how much patience is important to every other dimension. All dimensions are important. All dimensions are equal. 
but the process requires patience. The process requires patience. Because like I said, the purification process, even, even when you're purifying gold or silver, what you do is you put it through fire. And what the fire does is that the fire begins to melt it. And the fire begins to separate what is of value from what is not of value. So if you are also saying that you want to be transformed into the image of Christ, there's going to be a purification process. There's going to be a purification process. And that process might be pleasant and at times it might not be pleasant. But like we've said before, for the joy set before him, the Bible says that Jesus Christ did what? He endured the cross. He despised the shame. Do you have the patience that is required to begin to manifest the dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit? Because patience will be a very, very important factor in you growing, in you developing, in you beginning to walk in the capacity that Christ also walked in. Patience is also a character of God. Like all the dimensions that we've treated, patience is also a character of God. And we see that in his mercy towards us. We don't even have to look that far to know that patience is a character of God. All we have to do is look into our own lives. And we'll see that God is patient. I can look at my own life and I can say, indeed, God is a patient God because I'm not pure at all times. I don't do the right things at all times. I want to please him, but I don't please him at all times. And it is because of his patience that I can stand here today. And his patience is also revealed in your own life because we can all, we can all dig deep down and ask ourselves, are we pleasing God with everything that we do or do we please God at all times? The answer is no, because no man is perfect. No man is holy like God is holy. But the God we serve is a patient God. And once, what he wants to see is see us strive towards that perfection. And we'll all get there in the mighty name of Jesus. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9 tells me that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. He says, as some men can slackness, but in long suffering towards us. In what? In long suffering towards us. Not willing that any man should perish, but that all should come what? But that all should come to repentance. So it tells me that even in the process of us being transformed, it not only takes patience from us, but it also takes patience on the side of God. Because God sees us. There's no hiding from God. There's nothing you can hide from him because he is omnipresent. He's everywhere at all times. So even as he's here, as we are lifting holy hands and worshipping him, he's also there in that room when you're doing what you're not supposed to be doing. And because of his patience, he endures. Because of his patience, he overlooks. Because of his patience, he allows you to go through the process. Like I said, the process of purifying is not an instant process. The fire is applied. And the earlier you separate the gold from the, what do you call it now, from the sediments and the other things that are not they are not what they are not part of you know what makes it value. The earlier that gold comes out of fire, and I, and what I'm simply saying is that you decide how long you stay in that fire. You decide how long you stay in that process. But all through that process, like Second Peter chapter three verse nine tells us, it says God does not want any man to perish, but to come to what, but to come. To repentance. Joel chapter 2 verse 13. Joel chapter 2 verse 13 tells me, it says, and render your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God for he is what? Gracious and merciful. Slow to what? Slow to anger and of great kindness and repentance him of the evil. So God is patient. And what 
that what patience as a dimension of the fruit of the spirit does is that it also gives us that quality of God which is to endure which is to be patient which is to wait and why does he wait because we, we just read now that he doesn't want any man to perish because there's an end game there's an end result to what he wants to see and also in our lives we also have to show the same quality being patient in all things patience in our expectations from God patient in how we even relate with one another patient in all things because even our Christ, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is patient and we can see that in 1st Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 1st Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 1st Timothy 1 15 I'm reading the NLT version it says this is a trustworthy saying and everyone should accept it it says Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and he said I am the worst of them and I believe this is Paul talking here he said I am the worst of them verse 16 but God had mercy on me so that Christ could do what I want us to read it together so that Christ could use me as a prime example of his what of his great patience with even the worst sinners then others will realize that, that they too can believe in him and receive what? And receive eternal life. So the concept of patience is also revealed in the process of transformation from a life of sin to a life of purity. And it also reflects the character of God, which is long suffering. Because it suffers every time we go back to our iniquity. It suffers every time he, he sees that he's paid the price for us and we still don't realize what, what, what price has been paid for our lives. So patience is a character of God. And patience as a dimension of the Holy Spirit is needed in our lives for several reasons. And we're going to go into that right now. What is the need for patience? Or what are the benefits of this dimension of the fruit of the Spirit? James chapter 1 verse 4 says, Let patience have a perfect work. James chapter 1 verse 4. Let patience have a perfect work. That you may be what? Perfect. I believe, are we all reading this? That we may be perfect and entire wanting what? Wanting nothing. So the first thing that patience tries to take us to is a place of complete completeness. Patience makes us complete. And we can still just imagine, God just still envision that process of refining gold. That thing is of value because it has gone through the process. It's of value because it has endured the process. And the end game is that you might be perfect, entire, and wanting nothing. Patience is needed in our spiritual work. Because faith requires patience. You cannot work with God if you are not patient. We say faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And talk about the father of faith. You can't talk about the father of faith without talking about patience. You can't talk about Abraham without talking about patience. You can't talk about anyone that believed in God and received whatever they believed God for without talking about patience. So the work of faith is a work that requires patience. Even the work of faith that promises us eternal life, you have to be patient, enduring, to receive that promise that God has given to us. Faith requires patience. James chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. James chapter 5, verse 7 to 8. It says, Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. It says, Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and had long patience for it, until he received the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts, 
for the coming of the Lord does what? Draw it near. The new life that we talk about when we say we are being transformed into the image of Christ, that new life is also one that has to be lived in patience. You can't love without patience. You can't say you are meek without patience. And that's what I'm saying. Patience is also very, very, is also a very, very big foundation to every other dimension of the fruit of the Spirit. You can't walk in that new life without patience. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 2. It says, Wherefore, seeing that we are encompassed, we are all we are we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witness. He said, Let us lay aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. And let us run with what? With patience, the race that is set before us. Looking unto who? Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross, he despised the shame, and he sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. So we see here clearly that the scripture even says that for us to live that new life, it has to be lived with patience. It has to be lived with patience. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 to 5. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, it says, We have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2. By whom also we we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and we just in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations. Also knowing that tribulation worketh what? Tribulation worketh patience. The testing of your faith works patience. And patience does what? Experience. And experience what? Hope. And hope does what? Makes not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. You cannot walk this new life. You cannot walk in the, in, 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 you know, in the realm of what Christ has given to us without working in patience. Because the Bible makes it clear that the testing of your faith work at patience. And patience, with the working of patience being what? It brings hope. And the story of our Christian work is a story of hope. And that is why we need that dimension of the fruit of the Spirit, which is patience. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, we read in verse 36 and 38. Hebrews 10, verse 36 and 38, it says, For you have, for you have need of patience. Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive what? You might receive the promise. And that's why I'm saying that this walk with Christ is one that requires patience. There's no point doing the work and not receiving the promise. And for you to do the work and receive the promise, you need patience according to Hebrews chapter 10 verse 36. That you might receive the promise. And verse 38 tells us, verse 38 of Hebrews chapter 10, it says, Now the just shall live by what? The just shall live by faith. But if any man draws back, my soul shall not have pleasure in him. Why does scripture say this? Because the work is not an easy work. To live in Christ in this sinful world is not an easy work. To live set your, with your eyes, with your focus set on the joy that Christ has promised and the hope that Christ has promised is not an easy work. Because you are living in the flesh. Even though we, even though, you know, we, we walk in the spirit, we still live in the flesh. But it is patience. It's called, it's, you know, at times it's even called delayed gratification because you know that there's something you're looking forward to. There's a gratification you're looking forward to. And that gratification we're talking about is eternal life in Christ. That gratification is to worship with, you know, the angels and worship with Christ in heaven. But to get to that place, to get to that point, it requires us walking in patience. That we might receive the promise. Abraham had to be patient. We call him the father of promise, the father of faith. 
But for him to get to that point, too, he had to be patient. We read earlier on that God is not slack concerning his promises. But there has to be a testing of your faith that it may produce what? Patience in you. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8. It says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Better is the end of a thing. Better is the end of a thing. What are you looking forward to? What is that end you are looking forward to? What is the crux of your hope? What is the joy set before you? The Bible makes it clear that by two immutable things, it is impossible for God to lie. So we know that there's a constant that God does not lie. And we know that there's a constant that God, God's promises are yea and amen. His promises will always be fulfilled. So what this text simply tells him is that the ball lies in my court. And most times, the gap between where we are and what God has said concerning us and what God has promised is patience that is required for us to pass through that, you know, that, that gap. It is patience. Patience is required for you to travel that journey between where you are right now and what God has promised you. He says, the just shall live by faith. And faith takes you enduring. Take faith takes you staying put in that assurance that what God has said would surely come to pass. And the vehicle for it all is patience. It's patience. We all remember the story of Adam and we call him, um, not Adam now, Sarah. And Abraham. It got to a point that Sarah got impatient. And what did it produce? It produced Ishmael. And Ishmael became a thorn in the flesh of the promise that God had for Abraham. The same thing in our lives. God has promised us something. At times we get impatient. Sarah got impatient. And she decided to put things in her own hands. And decided to take matters into our own hands. And what did he produce? He produced what was never part of God's plan for their lives in the first place. How much are you allowing the Holy Spirit to begin to put patience in your heart? For you to be able to understand the importance of patience and how patience is important in the promises of God for you. Patience is required in our work with God. Patience is also required in our conduct towards one another. You made it very clear that God is patient towards us. Even when we are unfaithful, He remains faithful. Even when He's not seeing the results He wants to see in our lives, He remains patient and takes us through that process in love. And we've talked about love as one of the dimension of the spirit, but it also takes patience for you to love. Proverbs 25 verse 15, which is looked out in a couple of weeks ago, says that patience can persuade a prince. I'm, looking, I'm reading the NLT version. Proverbs 15 verse 25 verse 15. Proverbs 25 verse 15. It says patience can persuade a prince and soft speech can do what? can break bones. How patient are you with other people? How patient are you with your loved ones? How patient are you with family members? The Bible says patience can persuade a prince. And a soft speech can break bones. For you to get to the point of using soft speech, you must have developed patience inside of you. When the other person is raising their voice and you talk in a soft speech, it takes patience. It takes you allowing the Holy Spirit to develop patience within you. Loving requires patience. 
Loving does what? It requires patience. First Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7. First Corinthians 13, verse 4 to 7 is a very popular scripture. It says, Love is patient, and love is what? Love is what? No, the very first one. Love is what? Love is patient. Are we reading the same scripture? I'm going to be patient with the person on the first Corinthians 13 4. Love is patient and kind. Without patience, you can't love. Without patience. Because people come with bags and baggages. And if we're going to love the way God wants us to love, then you have to be patient with people. It says love is patient, love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It's not irritable. How many of us understand what is what is saying there? I get irritated at times. We all get irritated, but for us to love the way God wants us to love, it says love is not irrit irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. It's not only, it does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. Love is always what? Hopeful. And endures through every... Please, what is another meaning of endurance? Patience. Love is patient. And if I say love is patient and we say God is love, then we are saying God is what? God is patient. So every dimension we have mentioned is the character of God. It's the character of God. And there's one thing I want us to take home today. I want, us, want it to be more like a mantra for us. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rot. So you can write it down if you want to. Swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rot. What it means is that you are always willing to hear, always slow to speak, and always slow to get angry. Those are the foundations of patience. And it can be found in James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. James chapter 1, verse 19 to 20. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be what? Let every man, are we not there? James chapter 1, 19 to 20. Let every man, maybe in the KJV, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to rot. For the wrath of man worketh not what? It worketh not the righteousness of God. In our relationship with each other, we should be slow to what? Quick to what first? Quick to listen. Quick to listen. What's the second one? Slow to speak. And slow to rot. If we begin to apply this in our everyday lives, then we begin to see that transformation the Holy Spirit brings into our relationships with loved ones, relationship with family, relationship with everyone that comes across. Being slow, being quick to listen. You know, I studied communication in my first degree. And they will tell you that the person that can listen is the person that can gather all the important details. And most times, that's what you call the connotative meaning and what's the intended meaning from... People can say something, but what they are saying is not what they mean. And you can only get what is going on only if you listen. I can be angry and be telling you one thing, but the only way you can know what is making me angry is if, I, if you listen to what I'm saying and you ask questions and you listen to what is really going on. So being quick to listen is a strategy that brings peace. Being quick to listen helps you to discern what the real issue is. Because if you're not quick, if you're not quick to listen, you have, then you'll be very, very quick to speak. And what you'll be doing is responding 
or restore you, what you'll be doing is reacting and not responding to what the, what the issue is. And that is what brings strife most of the time. The issues are not dealt with because what people are doing is reacting. And people react when they don't understand what is going on. They react out of the emotions that are staying up within them. But a patient person does what? A patient person seeks to understand. And you can only seek to understand if you are quick to listen. If you are slow to speak. And if you are slow to rot. And I pray that God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. This is what patience develops in our lives. And the benefit of it is righteousness. The benefit of it is peace. The benefit of it is joy. The benefit of this is love. Because if we are quick to listen, if we are slow to speak, then what comes out of our relationship is an understanding of the issues and it brings out love for one another. Patience is required in our expectations. So I said patience is required in our work with God. Patience is required in our relationship with each other. Patience is also required in our expectations. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. It says, be careful for nothing. But in all things, by prayer and supplication, with what? With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your mind and cry your hearts through who? Through Christ Jesus. Our time is fast spent. But I'm just going to close with something I came across while preparing this message. There's something called a Chinese bamboo. And the Chinese bamboo is very, very valuable to the Chinese farmer. And the Chinese bamboo takes five years to grow. Not even five years to grow. Five years in the soil, you don't see anything. And the farmer has to water that seed every day for five years. That takes patience. And just like the Chinese bamboo, every good thing we desire in life requires patience. Nothing sprouts from the ground when it comes to the Chinese bamboo until five years in the ground. And it takes not just you putting it in the ground and forgetting about it, five years of nurturing, five years of watering, five years of feeding that seed. But then when that Chinese bamboo grows, when it comes out, it grows up to 90 feet in six weeks. So from the first day it comes out, from that first day to six weeks, it grows up 90 feet. The question is, what is the joy that is set before you? What are the things you want to see being made, being made manifest in your life? What are your expectations in life? What are the things you desire in life? Are you as patient as the Chinese farmer? Can you be patient enough to water that thing every day even though you don't see the results. Faith takes patience. And if you truly want to receive the promise, if you truly want to receive everything that you desire, then you have to allow the Holy Spirit to take you through that process of patience. You've heard that saying many times that the, the, the patient dog eats what? Eats what? The fattest bone, right? And most times, some people will tell you that somebody has already eaten the meat. But most times, we even interpret that, that, that idiom in the, in the wrong way. That's not what it's telling us. What it's, what it's simply telling us is that the person that is patient, just like the Bible says that patience does what? It makes you whole. It makes you complete. Wanting what? Wanting nothing. Because you have allowed the Holy Spirit to take you through the process of purification. You have allowed the Holy Spirit to, take, to build you up. And when it comes to you receiving your bone, you receive completeness, wholeness. And I pray that God will take us to that place of wholeness in the mighty name of Jesus. That every expectation we have 
every desire we have, every good thing we desire in Christ and desire in life, and the patience required to get what we want, God will grant unto us in the mighty name of Jesus. I have, you know, a, you know more like a roundup on the, this old dimension of the photosphere. I think I'll just move it to next week because of our time. Our time is far spent today. But I believe that this teaching on patience is important for everything that we have talked about. God is patient. And he also requires patience from you in your relationship with everyone around you and also in your expectations towards his promises. And those promises will not elude you in the mighty name of Jesus. As long as you allow the Spirit to work on you, allow the Holy Spirit to, to take you through that process, to walk and separate everything that needs to be separated from you. And God will take you to the place of fulfillment in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to just rise up and pray this morning. That Lord, even as I've heard your word, help me to cultivate patience in my life, Lord. Help me be quick to listen. Help me be slow to speak. And help me to be slow to rot. As I step into this week, my Lord and my God, help me to be begin to exercise your patience. Help me to be, be able to exercise this patience that you even show me every day. In spite of my weakness, in spite of my inadequacies, in spite of what I do, you remain patient. You remain patient in love. That as I, walk in, as I go into this week, help me to also exercise the same patience, Lord. Patience toward my loved ones, patience toward my spouse, patience towards my colleagues. Patience towards everyone that come across it. Patience towards even those that I'm preaching to. Let people see your, your, your quality of patience in my life, Lord. As you've learned, love is patient. Your love is patient. Help me to walk in that love. Help me to walk in that love. Even as I step out into this week in the mighty name of Jesus. In my expectations, my Lord and my God. Help me to be patient that I might receive the fullness that you want for me. Because your word says that patience develops and makes me whole. I don't want half-baked. I want your wholeness. I want that thing that you have prepared for me. And if I'm going to receive what you have prepared for me, I need to be patient. I don't want to take the step of Sarah who took matters in her own hands and received a thorn in the flesh. Help me, Lord, that my testimony will be complete. Help me, Lord, that my joy will be full. Help me, Lord, that I might walk in your understanding and walk in your precepts, my Lord and my God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way, everlasting King of glory. Let your name be praised and glorified, Lord. Even as we have gone through all the dimensions of the fruit of the Spirit, King of glory, Alpha and Omega, help me to begin to manifest these dimensions, everlasting Father. That this whole exercise will not be a waste of time. But help me, Lord, to walk in the Spirit. Help me, Lord, to, to hear your, your Spirit speak to me at all times. Help me to submit to your Spirit, everlasting King of glory. That your name may be glorified and your purpose be established everlasting, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory, Lord. Let your name be magnified, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I pray that God will grant you, grant you the grace to be patient in all things. In the mighty name of Jesus. I'm going to ask those who are giving their tithes this morning. You give your tithes.